A Look at Finance is underwritten by Janney Montgomery Scott, trusted advisors for generations. Welcome back. It's Thursday night. Stephen Carlton, the thoroughbred of I like financial it. advisors in Saratoga Springs. From Jenny Montgomery Scott Thanks, here Andy. with our weekly look at finance. We're all track all the time. Two weeks left. Yeah. yeah. We're in the home stretch, but uh, you're here to talk about more wider issues. Yeah, there's a lot going on this week. It's been a busy Hu week. Busy week. Huge news yeah. today. The NASDAQ had to close down temporarily because of some trading anomalies, I guess, right? You know, they say computers don't make mistakes, but yeah. there were some trading issues, some quote issues, and we basically, the NASDAQ was shut down from a little after lunch for about three hours today. So it was big, big news. Everybody was wondering when it was going to come back on. Turned it back on towards the end of the day, and it finished up 1%, a little over 1%. Yeah, how did it affect the markets overall, taking a look at the, uh, you know, the Dow and the S&P? We finished the day strong, but I think uh, the reason we ended up higher today is we got some really good positive economic news coming out of China, Europe, and the U.S., where things are starting to look like they're picking up. Some of the key numbers came in today that look positive. Uh, Dow, though, still below the 15,000 mark. Yeah, this is a, an important psychological point where you know, we broke below 15,000 this week, and people are like, oh, no, is this going to be a major sell-off? But you know, some of the numbers have been encouraging. Like, for instance, Gap today after the close. It, uh, for second quarter earnings, 64 cents, and they raised their dividend from 15 cents to 20 cents. So really positive news. As long as we keep hearing those kinds of things, that'll create some momentum as we go into the next quarter. Interesting news on the gap because that seems to be the part of that company that doesn't do so well or hasn't been recently. You know, they own Banana Republic, mm -hmm. uh, Old Navy, and a couple of other br online brands. You know, you're right, David. They've been beat up for years because trying to find their way again. And there's, so there's been change in leadership and change in style, and they've, they've really felt out a lot of different things. And this was a really good positive indicator that the fact that they raised their dividend, there's some real confidence coming from the company signaling there may be better days ahead. You know, new, the news doesn't get any bigger than this. We reported this earlier this week on, on right here on Look News. Uh, Multitown Board has given Global Foundries the mm. approval to build a second chip fab. This is on top of the R&D center, huge. the research and development center that is yeah. currently under construction. Um, Global Foundries has not yet committed mm. to building this thing. Analysts say that they will commit to it if the business is there. So, you know, we've been talking a lot about over the, our segments, Apple mm -hmm. looking to come back to the United States, mm -hmm. do some work. Yep. Um, the, the fab here would be the best place to do that because it's got the most high-tech equipment. It's brand new. Yeah, it's brand new. It's cutting edge. And here's, they're uniquely positioned. The, the, the tablets, the cell phones, the smartphones, uh, this chip plant is uniquely positioned to be this cutting edge technology. And so this explosive growth in this segment, as PCs have dwindled, as laptop sales have, have gone down, the tablet market, the smartphone market has really taken off. And so this long-term goal and, and, and really this long-term plan that this plant design has is they've always decided they want to put the R&D in, they want to put this other chip plant. So whether it happens you know, a month from now, six months from now, or, or a year from now, this is, seems to be the long-term direction that they're going. You know, a lot of the concerns was the infrastructure. There's, there's some money there from Global Foundries to mm -hmm. do that, putting yep. in new roads. This is huge. They currently have 2,000-plus employees mm -hmm. at the facility there. The R&D place, once it's done, 1,000 employees. Yep. And then this new factory, if they do double in size, 3,700. We're looking at 7,000 people working in Malta. And we talked about this. This isn't part-time jobs. This isn't consulting jobs. These are permanent, high-paying jobs with medical benefits, all sorts of good, solid-paying jobs. And the amount of trickle-down that will happen in the community is going to be huge for housing, for all the support uh, from smaller companies and subcontractors for this, this type of development. Absolutely couldn't be better news for the area. Yeah, talking about great benefits, mm -hmm. uh, moving on Global Foundries, great benefits. UPS, they're shipping out their benefits for, mm -hmm. um, and pardon the pun, but for their, um, <laughs> for their spouses, employee spouses. Mm -hmm. Thousands of spouses at UPS will lose their medical, the eligibility for medical coverage. Yep. They're saying because the, uh, folks can now get that health care somewhere else, they get it from uh, the Affordable Health Care Act. You know, th this is something that a lot of people have been concerned about. Is some of the unintended consequences of changing something as complicated as a health care plan. And companies are so careful on their expenses, and health care costs are one of those expenses that are growing at double, triple the rate of inflation. So when companies have the opportunity to eliminate some of those high-cost employee costs that they, they have the opportunity to remove themselves from, this is big news. The big concern with this announcement is are we going to see other major companies, Fortune 500 companies, follow suit? 
Yeah. And if that's the case, that's going to be very difficult for a lot of families. It's, it's going to be extremely difficult because mm -hmm. the money still has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing was if you had a spouse that was working for a company that was progressive in that matter. Yep. Um, um, you know, it's, I hate to say progressive when you're offering health insurance. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> but that's the way it's going. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's a sad yeah. state of affairs. Yeah. All right, uh, we've been talking about this for quite some time. Uh, mm. The housing market. Mm. We've seen mortgage rates going up. Mm -hmm. It's getting harder and harder for folks to get the key in the door. So the rental market is starting to accelerate. Mm -hmm. July saw some strong home sales here in our region for the Capital District, which includes uh, Albany, Saratoga, Rensselaer, and Schenectady counties. 27% increase in single family homes that have been sold. Mm -hmm. You say there's much more to these numbers though. If we dig a little bit deeper, David, not just the local story, but even nationally, what we're seeing is if mortgage applications are down nationally, that means that people are not applying for a mortgage to buy these homes. Typically, people that buy homes without a mortgage are investors, uh, major uh, private investment endowments, those kinds of things, and they're buying them for rental properties. They're converting single family or, or duplexes into rental properties. And we've seen in this area a huge explosion of rental properties because, like we've talked about now for months, People are getting part-time jobs, consulting jobs. They have a huge amount of student loan debt that they're carrying, and they're choosing to rent versus buying. They don't have the 20% to put down. And so the numbers look good on the surface, but our big concern is this trend that's been going now for two years where people are renting and they're not buying. Uh, some news on that this week. Uh, the information from the Post Star. We're getting this from the Post Star. The developer Richard Skimmerhorn, he's a big developer in Warren County and mm. also northern Saratoga County. He's just announced he's going to build 116 garden style apartments. Uh, whatever that means, I guess they get a garden with their apartment. Yep. I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. And 70, 70 senior apartments in the town of Monroe. Yeah. But this guy has huge developments all over mm -hmm. Warren County in the town of Queensbury, mm -hmm. and Washington County in the town of Kingsbury. And now he's adding these, I guess he has 1,000 apartment units mm -hmm. in that area alone. Well, you know, it's, we, we talked about it not just being new people coming out of college and everything else, but this is retirees. A lot of retirees that are getting older, they're not able to take care of the home anymore are choosing to go into rent a home and rent an apartment and it's just easier for them and so this demographic that's aging they're going into these kinds of facilities these kinds of homes that are turnkey they walk in the door everything's maintained for them and these are great opportunities for them to kind of live a little bit more simply and we're seeing it not just in this area but like you said all around and these kind of developers are seeing the opportunity all right, and let's end on a high note. Mm. Inc. Magazine, you may have seen it on the newsstands, you know, wherever you buy magazines these mm -hmm. days. Uh, the 5,000, the Inc. 5,000 is the list of the fastest growing companies in the United States. Uh, they take revenue over three years. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're looking back a little bit. Yeah. Um, on that is 18 Albany area New York companies. And in our area, when we break it down a little bit, just a handful in the uh, in, in our viewing area. Right. But one of note is number 815, mm. Finger Paint Marketing, uh, which recently moved into the Borders Bookstore. Isn't that great news? Uh, you know, a great local story, a great small business that has just grown so well. And they've just been great, such a great steward in the community, involved with a lot of charities, you know, right downtown Broadway, bringing all these permanent full-time jobs into the community. So it's exciting to see this kind of growth, and they've been doing a great job this year. Yeah, they got a, that, if you ever walk down that place, you know, walk down Broadway, take a look in that place, it's a really nice facility. They also yep. just bought Cotton Hill Studios in Albany. So, that's right. you know, they're expanding. Yep. So that's actually a sign that the economy is improving in some sectors because you know obviously when you have money to spend on marketing mm -hmm. it could be a sign of some good there, things. There, there are good news, good pieces of news throughout the state um, and it's encouraging signs. We're hoping that'll continue to happen going to next quarter. All right, who's your favorite in the Traverse? Oh my God, David. I <laughs> You're probably better able to answer that. <laughs> I just like to go and just enjoy seeing it all. It's just the action for me is the most fun to watch. Orb. Orb? Orb. Orb it is. Good. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Steven Carlson, hey, Steven. <laughs> yeah, keep your keep to the financial stuff. We'll yeah, I horse, not... horse betting tips from John Furlong. Absolutely, <laughs> thank Carl, you. First Vice President Jenny Montgomery Scott. He'll just help you invest your money once you win it. Yes, that's the way to do it. Nice. All thank right, you. thank you, sir. Now to see this Pleasure. segment and all our segments, head to the website. It's LookTVOnline.com.